Hello and welcome to Multiplying Freedom Ministries classes ongoing series in spiritual warfare, healing and deliverance. I'm Bruce Gordon. And today we are taking up the third eye. Uh, what is it? How do people end up with their third eye open? Uh, what happens to a person who has opened their third eye, either deliberately or not? What can you do about it? And we will get live prayer at the end of it. Uh, some of us will have it live. Some of us will see this on YouTube. But anyway, we'll have, uh, I'll be praying uh, in depth on this at the end. So anyway, what we've got is the third eye. Oftentimes when the topic is appropriate, I like to start with the Bible and we're going there today. The, the eye is fascinating if you do a Bible study on the eye. Um, eyes, what they're used for, how they're opened, how they're closed, even many metaphorical uses of the eye in um, literature, both biblical and otherwise. And what you've got is the eye is a critically important part of the body, both in the Bible and outside the Bible. Now, the eyes and the part of the forehead right around here, um, who knew that um, God is concerned about such things? Well, we're going there right now. Exodus 12, uh, verses 8 and 9. Um, years ago, um, when Israel was coming out of Egypt, the Lord spoke and said, we're going to have hands, uh, we're going to have a sign on your hand and between your eyes sort of like in Revelation, uh, sign on the hand or in the forehead. And you are going to be putting Bible verses on your hand and your eye. In Orthodox Jews, you've seen them with their stuff wrapped around here and something maybe wrapped around there. So this is actually in Exodus and also in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Uh, you've got the Shema and then you've got you impress these words on your children, speak of them when you get up, when you're, by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, bind them as a sign on your hand and as a band between your eyes, write them on the doorposts of your gates. These things are all done by uh, many Jewish groups currently. Um, these are commandments and they were given to Israel. We are not bound by them, <clears throat> but we can learn from them, as Paul says, everything in the Torah, everything in Tanakh has been written for our instruction. Now, remember, this is what the Lord says. Now, it's very interesting. Everything the Lord does, the enemy tries to twist it, turn it upside down, or pervert it. There's nothing um, original. The enemy, Satan and Lucifer, they are not creative they mimic and copy and adapt things that God does. So anyway, you go on in the scriptures and you see that when Cain killed Abel, um, the Lord marked his brow. He put a mark on him right here. And Cain says, you know, don't punish me like this. Everybody's going to be out to kill me. And God says, no, they won't. I'm putting a mark on you so no one will lay a hand on you. We're not told what form the mark took or what it looked like, but was told that it was on his forehead. Now, when you look at the scripture and you say eyes being opened, there's a fair amount of this. The best known ones, Hagar and her son are out in the wilderness. Hagar's saying, you know, I'm just going to be dying of thirst and exposure out here in the desert. Well, the Lord opened Hagar's eyes to see a well of water. So he was showing her that he had not forgotten. Now, Balaam was on his way to do some stuff. And this is the well-known story of Balaam's donkey on which he was riding, suddenly stopped dead and would not move. Um, the donkey saw an angel of the Lord. Balaam did not see it until the Lord opened his eyes. Second Kings 6, the well-known story of Elisha and the evil king sending out an army to surround Elisha and his servant. His servant got up in the morning and looked out the window and there was an army. And he was pretty rattled. He was shook up by this. And Elisha says, not to worry. Uh, there's more of us than there are of them. Lord, open his eyes. 
And the Lord opened his eyes and guess what? He saw chariots of fire, armies. And the last one we'll go with is Luke 24. Uh, Jesus comes alongside some disciples who are going, trudging along in the middle of the day, late in the day. And he looks and sounds pretty clueless. Uh, what are you guys talking about? Oh, all the stuff that's been happening. Oh, what's that? What, what, what's been going on? Are you the only person that haven't heard about the big execution that Pilate did the other day? Well, they implore this stranger to come to dinner with them. And as he is breaking the bread, he opens their eyes and they see that it's Jesus. And they see that he is with them. His is the spirit revealed him to them as Jesus, and then he, he promptly disappeared. So the forehead, the eyes, eyes being opened, there is a lot to be seen in the scriptures about this. And now we will pick up what the New Age Hindus, Buddhists, and other groups uh, look at this whole topic, the third eye, the forehead, um, spiritual portals, and what you've got is you can look at it in many different ways. One way is the seven chakra view taken by Hinduism and other groups, where there's spiritual centers, if you will, spiritual portals, hot spots, uh, important places in the body. And one of them is right here. And it's called the third eye or other names we'll get into in a few minutes. It enables the people to see into the spiritual realm. It really creates illumination. And sometimes people get very shook up by this because they're seeing things that you ordinarily wouldn't see. Remember, the Holy Spirit is not the only spirit that shows things to people, gives dreams, gives visions, gives revelation, you know, tells people stuff. There are plenty of other spirits out there that are not the Holy Spirit and they are opposed to the Holy Spirit. They work through the third eye and many other things besides. Now, if you're in a New Age context, many New Age groups will want you to or suggest that you open the third eye. And we're going to get into how people do that. It's very popular and people basically recommend it as something that you ought to do if you want more revelation, a more spiritual sensitivity, and so forth. Um, again, we're not denying that revelation and spiritual experiences are to be found in the third eye, but what we are saying is that these are deeply evil and deeply deceptive and lead people into deep realms of spiritual bondage and darkness. Even though the practitioners, writers, speakers, and whatnot who recommend this are saying this is a wonderful blessing. It's the way God wants us to see. There's more to be had and you can have it just open the third eye. And it sounds very plausible. I myself, back in my late teens, early 20s, was very taken up with this. Um, there is a book written in the late 50s, which was very um, getting a lot of attention when I was in those years, uh, called The Third Eye. Uh, purported to be written by a Tibetan named Lobsang Rampa. It was actually a hoax written by a British guy who had never been to Tibet and knew no Tibetan. But it was a big seller, sold half a million copies in its first two years. Big deal, capitalized on the appetite and curiosity in the West for things Asian and esoteric. Well, there's plenty of esoteric stuff going on out there. And many things that are just going on that are very, very deceptive. Now, it's interesting that some people who are seeing things in the spirit by means of the third eye, by means of demonic revelations, uh, sometimes they call themselves seers. And there are plenty of people in the church today who love that title, love that word. Uh, it's not a New Testament word. It's an Old Testament word back in the days when few people had an experience with the Holy Spirit, few people, very few in any generation, had any revelation or any dealings with the Holy Spirit themselves. 
but there were certain ones called seers. And that title is arousing a lot of interest these days in the church. And just be careful. Not all seers are seeing things by the Holy Spirit. I wish it were so, but it's not. Anyway, demonic doorway. This is a portal. It's an opening. It's an entry point. Sometimes you hear it's the eye of Shiva, the eye of clairvoyance, the eye of Horus, the eye of Osiris, the all-seeing eye. You can see it on the back of the $1 bill. There it is, a pyramid and the third eye, the all-seeing eye, just like Freemasonry. And under Franklin Roosevelt, uh, who signed off on the uh, order that's put it on the back of the $1 bill. It's still there. Um, sometimes you will get uh, deities like Shiva, Shakti, Hakimi, and so forth. It's sometimes called the brow chakra, the sixth chakra, the third eye chakra, the anja chakra. Um, there are many ways to describe it and many schemes of looking at it. Bottom line is, yes, it's real. Yes, it works. Yes, you can see a lot of interesting stuff, but it comes at a cost, and that cost is deep, deep demonic bondage. Now, how do people open the third eye? Well, there's a number of ways, but I'll give you some of the most common ones. One is various sorts of meditation. Now, <clears throat> when I was growing up, I did not know the Lord and I grew up in the 60s and 70s where meditation, especially Hindu and Buddhist Zen meditation was very much getting the attention of people young and old in the US. And I didn't know because I wasn't raised in the church. I didn't know that meditation is a biblical concept and the Bible commends it when you're meditating on the right stuff. Look no further than Psalm 1 and Psalm 119. Psalm 1 commends meditation on his word. He meditates day and night. Now, there are people that are meditating on all kinds of things. They're meditating on sounds. They're meditating on voices. They're meditating on the ohm syllable. They're using crystals. They're emptying the mind and meditating, meditating on the chakras, meditating on the spot on their forehead where the third eye is located, and this is deeply dangerous. Many people who are young, who have not been taught, this is why they need us who are a little older to say meditation, what are you meditating on? Many people have written cautionary words over meditation where people are emptying their minds. This goes at least as far back as Jesse Penn Lewis and um, Evan Roberts book, War on the Saints, where they caution strongly about emptying the mind, having nothing going on, no thoughts, and being passive and letting thoughts, feelings, pictures, ideas, words come into the mind within a way that is not discriminating or discerning. Deeply dangerous. It was then and it is now. Unhealthy focus on visualizations, dreams, dream interpretations, numbers, numerology, angels, spiritual helpers, and so forth. People even in the church, maybe especially in the church, are looking for more. And unfortunately, the church is failing many people by not giving them and helping them to attain to biblical fullness of the spirit. God will give you all the spiritual experiences and revelation you can handle if you look to him and do it his way. But that is the way of the cross, which requires surrender to Christ, complete obedience and dedication to the Lord Jesus and following his way. He will give you everything. But he doesn't just hand it out like candy and popcorn. It comes to those that he can trust. Now, people who want other things and an easier path often go another way, and they're meditating on all kinds of weird things. And they're in church and nobody knows. Now, Jesus talked about there are two roads. There are two gates. One is narrow. It leads to life. Another is broad, easy, and leads to destruction. Many people are on that road. And the same thing goes for meditation, 
visualization and so forth. I've used visualization, visualizing the accounts of heavenly worship in the book of Revelation, visualizing scenes from the gospels, whether I have a Bible in my hand or not. Visualization where you're focused on something in scripture or visualizing Jesus. This is usually safe. I say usually because there's exceptions to everything, but what you've got is visualization is often a means that the enemy uses to invade by deception and other similar means. Many Christians are very taken up with dreams and dream interpretations. You can go to dozens of places online, especially on Facebook, and get dream interpretation groups. God loves dreams. He uses dreams. You can read the Bible. You can't get away from dreams in the Bible. Trouble is, dreams can become an unhealthy preoccupation. Many people, they're very content and happy to meditate on dreams and what they saw or heard or what somebody said their dream might mean, and but they're very much neglectful of scripture and searching the word and meditating on the word day and night as Psalm 1 prescribes. Just, just to say, visualizations, dreams, they're okay, but just be balanced and stay where the word stresses. Numbers, angels, spiritual helpers, there are plenty of things people are looking for more. Just make sure that your more is biblical. Many people have their third eye opened due to, or in connection with experiences with yoga, Reiki, empty mind exercises, guided meditations, other than on the Bible, um, yoga, breathing exercises, um, wanting to see um, altered states. Some people, they go into soaking prayer, soaking worship, and the enemy can come and mess up somebody who's doing soaking. Just be aware of what's going on. Last, the uh, places where you will see this is street drugs. Many street drugs, especially hallucinogens, can open the third eye. Exposure to witchcraft and the occult, any kind of fortune telling, divination, or anything. Reading occult books, receiving healing through occult means, tapping and pressing on the forehead. These are some of the ways that the third eye gets opened. It affects us in various ways. You can develop feeling like energy shifts, energy pulls, sensations of heaviness, heat and cold other sorts of unusual manifestations, nightmares, loss of sleep, feeling like there's another spirit inside your body, feeling like things are moving around in your body, hearing voices in your head, outside your head, seeing things, seeing things internally, seeing things with your eyes, with your spirit, nervous, anxiety, fearful, depression. All of these things can come in through third eye opening and exposure to the types of spiritual practices that lead to the third eye opening. So how do we get free? Well, what you want to do is you want to deal with things similarly to the way you deal with any other demonic oppression or spiritual opening. Deal decisively with whatever led to this in the first place. If you know that you were practicing some kind of meditation that was not biblical, if you think that you exposed yourself to spirits, whether you went to yoga or Reiki, whether you did you know, yoga type breathing, had some kind of hypnosis, altered states, any of this stuff, repent of it. Repent, repent, repent. Repenting of whatever is not in line with the will of God. It could have been 30 years ago. If it's not been repented of, it can still provide an opening for the enemy to trouble you. Dealing with generational issues. Sometimes people are oppressed because of demons that are oppressing them, secondary to generational issues. Dealing with generational curses, witchcraft in the family line, and such like that is very effective. Repenting of and renouncing, forsaking any exposure to witchcraft and the occult, 
dealing with numerology, astrology, any sorts of energy healing other than healing prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, dealing with soul ties, dealing with trauma. Trauma many times opens the third eye. Trauma should be addressed prayerfully, lovingly, graciously, and with healing. Make sure that you're getting healed from trauma. Freemasonry and other forms of secret societies, renounce, renounce, renounce. We have a three video series, read along prayers for the renunciation of Freemasonry. Verbally renouncing Satan and all his power. Now we're gonna pray in a few minutes and we'll get into this. Renouncing any allegiance to agreement with Satan or any other spirits including spirits of yoga, spirits of Reiki, spirits of Buddhism, Hinduism, Kundalini spirits, or anything else. You want to bind them and cast them out. And we want to close the third eye, and we will do that. So we're going to get into praying now. Uh, it's getting along in our lesson here, and we usually move into prayer pretty quickly. To summarize, the third eye is quite real. Many people around the world have opened their third eye, many of them willingly, knowingly, eagerly wanting more, more spiritual experiences, just as I did when I was 20 years old. I didn't know about the Bible or Jesus. All I knew was that that was something very different. I knew nothing about it, but I wasn't really comfortable with it. Here was a new easy way of spirituality that looked and felt very exciting and appealing. And so I jumped in. I later had to repent very deeply for all of that. It produces many spiritual sensations and experiences that are consistent with demonic oppression. Yes, it can be closed and you can be freed. And we are going to do this right now. This is the same thing, whether it is you or somebody that you know and care about. So we are going to get into that right now. In the name of Jesus, we say no to every spirit that does not worship and obey the Lord Jesus Christ. We say no to every spirit that wants to open the third eye. We say no to every spirit that wants to give us dreams, visions, insights, revelations, to make us into a seer, unless you spirits want to worship and obey the Lord Jesus Christ. We bind you, we silence you, we disable you, and we cast you out right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come into the presence of Almighty God, the Lord of hosts, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We worship and obey only the Lord Jesus Christ, only God the Father, the Lord of hosts, Almighty God. And we say no to all other spirits, and any experience that does not come from the Holy Spirit sent from God the Father. We worship and adore and follow, obey the Lord Jesus Christ, and we make him the Lord of all. We cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus. We cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus. We lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. His name is above every name, and we worship him, and we affirm our devotion, our surrender, and our following of him. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Lord. Jesus is Lord, not just any Jesus, not a false Jesus, not a demonic Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ, who was born of a virgin, who was born, who has lived a life, who was crucified, dead, buried, raised from the dead, and ascended into heaven. He rules and reigns on the throne next to Almighty God, his Father. And we are seated in the heavenlies with the Lord Jesus Christ right now. All other spirits, we refuse them, we renounce them, we curse them, we say, leave us alone. We loose ourselves from them in the name of Jesus. We ask that only the Holy Spirit of God the Father and the angels sent by the Lord of hosts, Almighty God, are operating in us and around us right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we repent for opening any doors in the occult realm. We repent for anything we have done or said that produced any openings or any compromises. 
We take back any ground that we have given to the enemy, any ground the enemy has taken from us, we take it back right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask you, Father, to cover with the blood of Jesus and to seal in the name of Jesus any access points, cardinal points, exits, entrances, gates, doors, windows, tubes, pipes, channels, portions, portrons, in the name of Jesus, that they be covered, closed, and sealed with the blood of Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. We worship the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. We renounce any other gods, any other names, any other spirits, any other experiences other than the ones given by the one true and living God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, Father, to cancel. We take the sword of the Spirit and cancel all assignments, all works, orders, effects, and assignments over the eye of our soul, the third eye, any chakras. We close them. We seal them with the blood of Jesus. We stop any and all flows of ungodly soul power, psychic powers, spiritual powers that are not given by the one true and living God and his Holy Spirit sent from God the Father. We renounce them. We renounce all assignments from the eye of Shiva, Horus, Lucifer, the throne seat, the cold fire center, the horn of the unicorn callback programming, the temple of Mott or the goddess, we renounce them, we cut them off, we say no, 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 no. In the name of Jesus, we refuse them, we renounce them, and we say no. We place everything in our life, especially the third eye and anything connected with it, under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we ask you, Father, to take control and seal us all over with the blood of Jesus. We repent for opening any doors, for any compromises, for any way that we have given ground of any sort to the enemy, not even a sliver. We take it back and we refuse to allow the enemy under any name, Satan, Lucifer, Shiva, Horus, under any name, only the name of Jesus, only the name of Yahweh, Almighty God, the Lord of hosts, they are the ones we worship, and we worship no others. We renounce all others in the name of Jesus. We refuse having anything to do with the temple of Satan, the golden triangle, pyramids, the temple of the golden dawn, theta, beta, and alpha wave consciousness, all things we bring under the lordship of Jesus Christ. We renounce everything other than our surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. We say no to all gods and goddesses other than Almighty God and the Lord Jesus Christ, Hakini, Shakti, serpents, all other spirits. We say no in the name of Jesus. We cut all bonds and ties, connections between us and any connections with any serpent the snake, the serpent, any manifestation of the enemy, of Satan, Lucifer, or any other name that they use, go by, or deceive people with. We say no more. The mouth, the voice, the eyes, the ears, the smell of the serpent, we cut it off. We cleanse ourselves with rivers of living water. We ask you, Father, to con con disconnect us from cords, ley lines, wires, transmissions, and broadcasts between any chakras, especially that of the third eye, anything going by names of Mother Earth, Ku Himalak, Sia, the sixth chakra, the brow chakra, or any other names in the name of Jesus. We break the power and we loose ourselves from the power of all demonic and cosmic seals. We do dismiss demonic and cosmic gatekeepers of our chakras, especially that of the third eye. And we say no in the name of Jesus. We renounce every experience that does not come from Almighty God the Father. And we renounce and refuse any dealings with the Kundalini spirit or any other spirits coming in through the third eye in the name of Jesus. We ask you to loose us and cut us off from any spirits that, Father, you did not plant within us, that you did not give us. 
We ask you, Father, to heal any parts of our soul, our spirit, our body that have been damaged or affected, our DNA, our molecular structure, our organs, our heart, our soul, our memories, our feelings in the name of Jesus. We say no. We refuse to accept anything that comes from Satan or Lucifer by any name or by any title in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we have the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We take up that authority. We order all demons to leave in the name of Jesus. We order them all, all spirits that do not worship and obey the Lord Jesus Christ and Almighty God the Father, we tell you to go in the name of Jesus out of our conscious, our subconscious, our unconscious, our bodies, our mind, our will, our emotions, our personalities. We terminate your assignments. We break all legal holds in the name of Jesus. We cut off and break all curses going back three generations, 10 generations, back to Adam and Eve. We cut you off at the roots. We evict and we say no. We say go to the spirits of Antichrist, New Age, spirit of death, spirit of infirmity, spirit of confusion, lying and deception. Go in the name of Jesus. Spirits of Shiva, Shakti, Hakini, Horus, Osiris, spirit of fear, familiar spirits, divination spirits, psychotic spirits, spirits of mental illness, mental illness, go in the name of Jesus, bipolar disease, psychotic disease, sorcery, witchcraft, anja, sham, om, and pravana in the name of Jesus. We say no, we bind you, we silence you, we evict you, we send you to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, to be disposed of however he determines. We bind, silence, and evict every spirit that has troubled us, especially those having to do with the third eye, false spiritualities, false Jesuses, false Holy Spirit, Kundalini spirits, any spirits that bring in deception, lying, misleading, or confusion in the name of Jesus. We bind you, we silence you, we disable you, and we send you now to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ for him to dispose of according to his most gracious will. We thank you, Father, and we ask you to heal each part of us, heal our spirits, our memories, our feelings, our consciousness, our emotions, our thoughts, our cognition, our bodies, every part of our being. We ask you, Lord, cover us with the blood of Jesus, fill us with your Holy Spirit, and heal us, restore us in the name of Jesus. We seal all of these prayers, declarations, and affirmations in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and Almighty God the Father, the Lord of hosts. We have this authority and we use it together, and we put all spirits on notice we are together the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we speak to you, spirits, demons, in the name of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of Almighty God and the Lord Jesus Christ. You have no power over us. We dwell in the shelter of the Most High. We rest in the shadow of the Almighty. We tread upon lions and serpents. We trample the great lion and the cobra. We trample you underfoot in the name of Jesus right now, and we say, no, you will not and cannot harm us, afflict us. We shield ourselves from you. We cut off every agreement, every, every tie, every connection in the name of Jesus, and we declare we are free. We are more than conquerors, and we are pure, free, and delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are free. Those that we minister to can be free. This is Bruce Gordon with Multiplying Freedom Ministries. Our webpage is multiplyingfreedom.com. On YouTube and Facebook, we are at Multiplying Freedom. And if you have questions, comments, suggestions, or help me, write to us at multiplyingfreedom at gmail.com. Most of what I prayed a minute ago was improvised and adapted from a document that we posted on Facebook and on our webpage 
called Prayers to Close the Third Eye. You can download it as a PDF. This video is going up on YouTube uh, shortly. And there are other um, videos similar to this, but this is very powerful and we're posting it up soon. Hope to hear from you soon. We bless you in the name of Jesus, and we hope to see you and hear from you. If you have questions, comments, suggestions, or need help, we are here. Thank you and God bless you.